Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be focusing on technology and astronomy, looking at the telescope and how it can be useful um, to tell us information about stars and other distant objects. So as usual, let's start with an overview. So in our video we're going to re revisit the concept of the electromagnetic spectrum, um, looking at how we can detect electromagnetic radiation from distant objects in the universe like other stars and then focusing on the telescope, so starting off by looking at how a telescope works and then looking at some of the different types of telescopes that exist, such as reflecting, refracting and radio telescopes. Okay, so let's start by having a look at um, the, the syllabus information that we're going to look at in this video. So looking at some technological developments that have advanced scientific understanding about the universe. So that's kind of the focus for today. Okay, so looking at electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so some of the things we know about electromagnetic radiation is that it travels in all directions from a, from a star or any object that emits electromagnetic radiation. It consists of electric and magnetic fields in combination. You can see on the image here that, that you know, the, the red and the blue representing those two different fields at right angles to each other. But they all travel at the same speed, what we call the speed of light. And, but even though we still have different wavelengths and frequencies of the different types of radiation. So we see here is the electromagnetic spectrum. So looking at going from um, long wavelength radiation such as radio waves all the way up to very short wavelength of gamma rays, seeing that giving you a bit of a size comparison and seeing that the frequency changes. Um, in, we say it's inversely proportional as, as the wavelength gets longer the frequency gets smaller. And then also seeing a bit of a relationship to the temperature of different stars that emit that, that sort of wavelength. Uh, we'll be looking at that in the next video, looking at the, the spectroscope. Okay, but so what we see is that what we call as visible light, or the, you know, our Roy G. Biv, the colours that we can observe, are actually just one small part of the overall electromagnetic spectrum. So all the colours that we can see you know, make up this tiny little band somewhere roughly in the middle of the electromagnetic spectrum with gamma rays and other you know, high energy um, types on one end, your lower energy radio waves on the other end. Okay, but so now if we look at the sun, you know, our sun, centre of our solar system and the electromagnetic radiation that it produces, so we can see that at the moment we're just looking at our visible um, wavelengths from violet all the way through to, to red, um, and we can see that we produce most wavelengths. Uh, when we look at our spectroscope video, we'll see that there's, it's actually, it's not, 100% that way, um, and we'll look at why. But the idea is that you, you can see we have varying intensity. So that is light in the middle portion of the spectrum, so around that green, some of the, the kind of palish blue and yellow sort of area, is what is most intense. And at the violet end and the red end of the spectrum that we produce less light. That helps to explain why the sun appears to, um, to be fairly yellow to us in terms of, you know, that's the, the region that we're seeing the most light. But the reality is that the electromagnetic radiation that comes from space, such as from the sun or from other stars, it doesn't all penetrate the atmosphere. So when we're producing all these different wavelengths, only two main areas of our spectrum can actually reach us on the ground. So we've got well, the optical, so around our visible light, um, in that sort of, we call it the optical window, but then also some in the radio kind of area of the spectrum. All the other wavelengths um, are blocked by different portions of the atmosphere. And so what that, that has an impact on where we position telescopes, whether we put them on the ground or whether we have to place them up in space. You know, so if, we, if we're going to be using things on the ground, they have to be telescopes that either pick up visible light or radio waves. If we want to look at something else, we need to actually position this telescope in space, such as the Hubble Space Telescope or Kepler. And so let's focus on telescopes now. So we use telescopes to essentially see the light from distant stars and galaxies, from all sorts of different objects. So, but they come in different types, and we're going to focus on a little bit about how they work and then go through some of those types. Okay. So we're going to focus, first of all, on the very famous scientist Galileo Galilei. So he was the first scientist to use the invention of the telescope to look at the night sky. He didn't invent the telescope, it's important to be, to, to be clear on that, but that he was the first to use it in this particular way, to, to study objects in the night sky. 
So he was able to identify the moons of Jupiter and also craters on the moon um, because of the high level of detail he was able to see using this instrument. Okay, so now we're going to look at the different types of telescopes that exist. So the first one, the one you might be more familiar with, is what we call a refracting telescope. So we have a combination of lenses, two biconvex lenses, looking at the shapes that you can see here. We have what we call the objective lens, and then the eyepiece or secondary lens. Um, and so we position these two at a, at a certain distance apart from each other, um, because what we want to do is we want to match up the focal length of each of the lenses so that they meet at this, this point in the middle. Okay, so that then that when we, we position the lenses in that way, then we're able to see the image that travels through the objective lens and then it meets us at the eyepiece. But the, the reality of this is that what we see is actually an inverted image. You notice this that if you happen to use a telescope and you point it at something on the ground, that it looks upside down. Just because of the way the, the light rays travel, as you can see looking at this image here, that the ray that's at the top here ends up at the bottom here and then is refracted out to the person looking. Um, now, when we're looking at stars and distant objects, that actually isn't too much of an issue because ultimately that doesn't necessarily change what we want to understand about it. It is only more apparent when we look at something that we know exactly which way up it should be. Okay, and so let's just quickly look at this concept of magnification or how we can use a telescope to make distant objects look bigger to our eye. So by positioning um, by positioning the lenses in the way that we do, with the different focal lengths that each lens has, that we end up with a result of magnification. So if we choose our lenses carefully, we choose our focal lengths carefully and position them accordingly, um, we get a certain magnification, which comes from the ratio of those two focal lengths. So depending on how thick our lenses are, we can get different magnifications. That's essentially what happens inside a microscope. Um, if you've used one of those ones that has a rotating kind of barrel of different objective lenses, that it's changing the type of lens that you're looking at that object through so that you can see a larger or smaller magnification. Um, we don't go into the depth of this in, in this area of the course, but that's just for your interest to see how we actually work that out. And then we look at um, what we call the reflecting telescope. So instead of having two, um, two lenses, we actually use a combination of a very large spherical mirror and then an eyepiece lens, or well, two kind of mirrors. You can see a very large curved mirror at one end, a smaller secondary mirror here, and then a, an eyepiece kind of out the side. So a lot of the telescopes that you might use to look at the night sky, the, the very big kind of barreled ones are a reflecting telescope. If you look kind of down the end, you can see that shiny mirror at, the, um, at this far end. Now the reason, you know, magnification still works in, in much the same way because this mirror has a focal length just like this lens does. Um, but the idea is that we can, you know, if we want to upscale it, if we want to, to make a more sensitive telescope and catch more light, it's much easier to do that with a, using a mirror than it is with a lens because there's really only so big you can make that objective lens. But you can make a mirror as big as you like. Um, you know, when it's made out of metal. I mean, it does get tricky, but it's, but it's certainly much more achievable. And so that means that reflecting telescopes can be much more sensitive. So you can see more distant objects in terms of, you, you know, that you're catching very small amounts of light um, using this type of telescope. And then we look at our last type where we're looking at radio telescopes. So we're, remember, in this type, we're not looking at visible light. We're looking at radio waves. So they're not visible to the human eye. Um, but you notice these massive satellite dishes like this. Um, so this, you know, this is the sort of one that you have out at parks in, in New South Wales. So you may or may not have seen it or visited it in the movie The Dish as well. Um, the idea is that they, have, they can be very large satellite dishes, that they can collect this, these radio waves, they can you know, capture them and bring them together, focus them towards this um, detector, this area here, and reflect them up there where that, that signal can be picked up and then translated. Um, so when we're wanting to look at really distant objects or really study the night sky very carefully, um, we tend to use radio telescopes um, because we can actually combine multiple radio telescopes to be able to get maximum information. Um, so like what we have, the square kilometre array, where you can get a massive array of these dishes so that you can, you can get as much information as possible about all sorts of areas of the sky. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.